So what does a patent protect? Hmm. It protects plants. These are plants that are asexually uh, reproduced plants. So basically you use seeding, rooting, grafting. Okay, so this is, this is really important. Um, you can use budding, etc. Uh, that's one thing you can patent, plant patents. Okay, it's one type of patents. It's different than a seed patent that's just in a different, I believe that's in utility patents. But plant patents, if, again, if you're a botanist and you're making stuff, uh, you cannot file for a patent on weed strands or cannabis strands because it's federally illegal. But uh, if, you know, technically if that wasn't uh, prohibited on a federal level, uh, making new strands um, through budding and grafting and, and stuff like that would be totally uh, patentable subject matter. Uh, design patents. Again, this covers the ornamental design of, of patentable goods, of any type of goods. So for instance, you know, like a hammer or uh, a chair or a stool. Uh, typically these are articles of manufacture. These are solid objects without moving parts. Um, and they, they could be parts used on a, a machine. For instance, like I said, a turntable platter. Um, okay, but like a guitar or a watch, how it looks, all those things could be subject to design patent, which lasts for 15 years. 90% of patents, though, are what are called utility patents. These are basically, um, you know, things that do stuff. <laughs> which is basically everything, uh, you know, so it's a little different than plant patents, okay, but how things do stuff, processes, uh, you know, articles of manufacture, machines, uh, methods, those are all, uh, you know, compositions of matter, chemical compounds, all that stuff is typically under um, utility patents. And then you have what are called improvement patents. So, uh, there could be a patentable idea that's out there that's executed in a product and you could figure out an improvement for that and you could file for a patent on that. No problem, right? So like let's say there's a turntable motor that, uh, you know, is patented and I come up with an improvement for the, tur the turntable motor. Uh, well, that's great. Um, I can't do shit with it because I'd have to license the patent for the patented motor to execute the improvement in a product. So what I could do if I was smart is I would partner with whoever owned the patent on that turntable motor and we would have a licensing pool and we could all make a little bit of, little bit of money and I'd file for the, you know, I'd have the improvement patent and we could execute in a product. So having an improvement patent doesn't mean you can, you can actually execute it in a product. You can sell that patented idea, but you can't do anything with it. Um, but let's say that turntable motor was in the public domain, meaning the actual patent for it had expired last year. You know, I could file for the improvement patent on that technology and I could sell it and execute it in a product, no problem, because the underlying technology that it's improving upon is in the public domain. But if it's not, the underlying technology or patent, you know, idea is still patented, you will have to like work that out. You can still get your patent, your improvement patent, but you cannot execute it in a product without licensing the patent that's in that underlying product, if that, if that makes sense, okay? Okay, what does patent not protect? It does not protect products of nature. Let's say a tree or hmm, human DNA <laughs> or uh, water. Now you can patent processes of purifying water. You could patent processes uh, for taking two types of trees and making a new type of tree. Uh, you could patent you know, um, methods for uh, making fruit bigger on a tree, etc. But you cannot also patent laws of nature, um, gravity or whatever, fruit rots. However, uh, you could patent technology or patent ideas uh, for a product that 
helps fruit decompose faster for compost. Or you could patent ways of using gravity per to perform a specific task. Okay, you cannot patent mathematical theory or mathematical formula at all, just how it's applied to inventions. You cannot patent algorithms, just what an algorithm will do. Meaning, the algorithm itself is not patentable, but the variables, how you assign meaning to the variables um, is patentable. So we'll, when we watch uh, you know, patent absurdity, which is about software patents, they'll get into the eHarmony compatibility algorithm. The algorithm itself, the basis for how the algorithm works is basic mathematical theory. It is not patentable. But the way that they uh, apply, um, you, know, um, you know, that you like cats or that you like uh, rap music or that you like to play Fortnite or that you are born in May or whatever it is they, those variables are you know uh, those meanings are applied to the algorithm that then the algorithm creates compatibility but that same algorithm could be used to um, determine the fact that because you bought this product on Amazon and you looked at this product uh, you know on B&H that you may like this product Okay, it uses the same algorithm, it just has different meaning applied to the, to the variables. So you cannot patent math, but you can patent how you use math to do something specifically, if, if that makes sense. Okay, you can patent medical procedures. Uh, medical procedures are totally patentable, they're just highly frowned upon uh, in the industry, because if you come up with a way of performing heart surgery that's new and inventive and patentable subject matter, you could patent that and then extract, uh, you know, basically monopolize that. And anytime anybody wants to perform that procedure, they'd have to pay you. Now, this is highly frowned upon in the medical industry, but you can patent, uh, you know, those types of things. As I said, after 2013, you cannot patent human DNA. Okay. 20% uh, of human DNA that had been found is patentable. Human DNA, you know, was just found. You didn't make anything. It's just like going out into the woods and finding a new tree that uh, no one knew about or a new animal that no one knew about. You cannot patent, you cannot patent that because you found it. But if you take human DNA and you combine it with horse DNA and you make a human centaur, you could patent that shit. So you can patent living things. You can patent, um, you know, ways of making chickens that have bigger thighs and bigger breasts for meat birds uh, for, you know, KFC, which is not Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. It's KFC because that's what they're using in their birds to make, make them meatier or whatever. So, I mean, you can use patents for living organisms and creating living organisms, but they have to be new and inventive. It can't be just something that you, that you find. But the way that you can combine things and re essentially remix human life and life in general, um, you know, biology is patentable. Okay, but you cannot patent human DNA strands because you simply find them. You don't actually make anything new.